as well. Okay. Um, so you are standing under nine tons. All being held up by these two white beams on each side. But it is very safe, no worries. Um, now the reason why it's not held up by the track here is so that you can check the wheels and whatnot. Uh, you can check all underneath right here. Um, and then as soon as we need to get the train back onto the track, what we'll do is we'll have the track move over here. We'll have the feeder wheels push the uh, train right back onto the track, and then we'll move the track back over. Now, something cool about the wheels. Well, look out. It's going to be cool. Um, I'm turning it. Wow. Now, you can actually turn the wheels all the way around. That's really quick this morning. Um, so, uh, by having the... Um, wheels be able to move in all directions like this. Oh, uh, it makes the ride a lot smoother um, because this part of the train could be up like this, and this part of the train could be like flat, for instance. Um, so instead of having the uh, rows themselves have to move, kind of like on Lost and Sponsor, you have different cars that go through different parts of the track, uh, and they're bumping around inside the track. By having the wheels the guide wheels on the outside and being able to move in all directions like that, um, it makes for a lot smoother of a ride. Obviously, you'll never have them complete 180. Uh, it's just a cool effect to show you how, uh, how we do um, Another thing, um, everyone who went up to the top, uh, right here, this is that special, this goes with that special bump, the turquoise bump that I was talking about. So. It'll hit. Okay, it's locked right now. Um, so that'll be up when it's going through the lift hill over here. As to not interfere with, interfere with the uh, lift chain dog right here, that green bump will bump the switch right here. And the chain dog will come down. And um, then it'll lock into that descent chain. Right here, running along next to the uh, chain dogs, these are uh, newer versions of the anti rollbacks. Um, you can tell that there's both on, or two on both sides. Um, that's because of kind of like what we talked about with the um, alternating uh, teeth as you go up the hill. Does that make sense? All right. So another thing I want to talk about real quick. There's three different types of braking systems on Griffin. First one. Uh, you have the pneumatic brakes that squeeze right here. You have the magnetic brakes, which are also known as trim brakes, right here. Uh, so those are magnetic. Um, and that will usually just be to slow down the train. It won't be, uh, pneumatic brakes will usually be to stop it. And then we have one more type of brake. Can anyone guess what that is? Water brakes. Exactly. <laughs> those are known as water brakes. Uh, it will take the surface tension of the water to stop the train through that final turn. Or not stop, slow down the train through that final turn. Uh, if you don't have the water brakes, uh, then you will take that last turn all the way to the train. Uh, and because uh, not only is that water a, um, is a braking system, but because it also the water touches you and whatnot, uh, the maintenance team has to get a commercial pool license. Uh, so that'll take, that'll take about 40 hours to complete on top of the train before the ride itself. I don't know why. Oh, I think it's just the cushion. I think it's an air on one end or another. Yeah, that's why they do it. It's going to hurt if it's pinched at all. Yeah, it's going to hurt. 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 I told you. So you can see the feeder wheels are moving along the bottom. The feeder wheels are not holding the weight that metal tons. Um, it's just pushing the train. Do you guys run through the inner time? We can. We can on uh, very high operating days, such as today, is why we're doing it. Okay. We're, we're going to run three today uh, because of the high number of people that are visiting the park today. More processes right there. So where are the wheels that were touching the rails there? They're still on the sides. Um, they're the little... Here, you'll see it. Oh, wait, no, you won't. 
Uh, there's a little gray wheel. You see the gray wheel on like the back left corner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's where uh, it's holding all the weights when it's okay. underneath the side. And the Loch Ness um, track that kind of moves left and right is a little bit similar to this one. It's just a little bit older technology. First of all, the coating on the outside, that's known as polyurethane, um, so it's kind of a special plastic, uh, and it gets covered by a company uh, known as Euromet. We also have wheels covered by Macklin, which you'll see at uh, Alpengeist. Um, so what we'll do is, once this gets worn down, we'll send it off over to Euromet, they'll put a new coating of polyurethane on the wheel so that we can still use the main part of the wheel. We'll get it sent back, and then we have to wait for this glue to dry in between. Um, first of all, he has his screen right here. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the harness monitor telling which harnesses are open and closed. Right, so you can see that man hasn't closed this harness yet, so it appears as open on his screen. Um, another thing that he can do is he can see the entire layout of the track. Um, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so wherever it's yellow, that's um, the proxy sensors reading that the train is in that area. Um, so thus he can see exactly where the train is on the track. Um, he can also see where the train is at some points on these cameras up here, um, but that's not as much um, to see where exactly the trains are as much as it is to make sure all the people on the ride are doing safe things, um, are such as right? taking selfie sticks or taking out the phone. Uh, he can actually talk to the people on the roller coaster um, and stop the ride if he sees something bad and unsafe happen um, throughout the ride. Um, <laughs> How long does it take to go around the track? Then? About three and a half minutes. Exit. Three and a half. Wait, is that from leaving the station? Exit. That's from yeah. That's from the train moves to when it returns to the main brakes. Main brakes. Yep. Main brakes are our magnetic set of brakes, which are in the back. Okay. Right here, we are monitoring the wind. Right here, is the turnstile count. Over on his screen, over there, you can see that he's monitoring the temperature as well. So 180 people come through two points. Yes, that's for that's for just today. Yeah. Um, what's the average in one day? Um, on a Saturday, I want to say around 10,500. Yeah, we can hit about 10,000. We so, used this is, this is a good weekend. We used to be able to hit 14, but they had to slow down the speed of dispatching trains due to the force that the gates would actually hit the fence over there and the side of the um, control booth. Pick up, it would, it was, they were going too fast, basically. So they slowed the rate down, so we can't hit what we used to be able to hit. And all those dispatches over there, those are all set by ground in the past. Normally we enjoy the first time riding for being a lot of you guys back to the list. Monster, for instance, um, they've had to add safety things over the years. 
Like, like for instance, there used to not even be gates blocking you from getting onto the train <laughs> back when it first opened. Um, so that's after the fact proxy switches um, are after the fact. Um, automatic brakes are after the fact. Uh, they had manual brakes.